Joining me now from Munich is Democratic Representative Jim Himes. He's the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee. Representative Himes, it's always a pleasure to have you here on the show. Look, we mentioned it in the intro for the first time since the 1990s. Russia was not invited to the conference. Considering Russia's exclusion, and based on what you just heard, and frankly, what we all just heard from Vice President Harris, that was very strong language. Do you think Putin is finally hearing the message loud and clear? Well, there's no question he's hearing the message loud and clear. The question is, does he care about it? And that's been the question for the last year or so as he's conducted this brutal attack on Ukraine. But it was galvanizing in the room to hear the vice president say that we are now formally uh, considering uh, Russia. And from, as the vice president said, from the private, uh, you know, in the field, right up to the people in the Kremlin responsible for crimes against humanity. You know, there, there was a thirst for that sort of justice here in Munich. And of course, uh, we hope that that might cause some of the people involved in the some of the Russians involved in the war in Ukraine to think twice about their about their actions. I think another thing that might make them think twice, Representative, is the fact that President Biden is going to be traveling to Poland next week to commemorate the one year mark of the war. There's been a bipartisan call for the United States to send more military aid in the form of F-16s to Ukraine. Do you think the administration is going to continue to do as much as it can in terms of the military support? Support it's providing. I do, I do, and at the end of the day, you know, I, I'm pretty convinced that Putin thinking twice is going to be him uh, understanding that the losses that he's bearing, both in terms of men and, uh, and and his military, are no longer sustainable. And of course, that's going to be a function of the speed with which we can get those munitions, that training done. You know, you can't just send a tank, you can't just send an aircraft. You need to actually train the Ukrainians in the use of that uh, of that material. Um, and uh, but nonetheless, you know, I will tell you, I was in a breakfast this morning with the minister of defense for uh, probably 10 of our NATO allies, everybody is, is now completely on the same page that Russia must lose, Ukraine must win, and that we need to provide the tools necessary to bring that about sooner rather than later. When you say everybody's on the same page, though, Representative, does that include countries like Turkey being okay with countries like Finland actually getting NATO status? Well, um, that's a that's a different issue, right? Turkey has their own uh, uh, issues uh, with the two candidates for NATO having to do with the Kurds. Um, the feeling here is, and I'm not in on those discussions, but the feeling here uh, is that the Turks have an election coming up. A lot of what we're hearing out of Turkey may be as it might be in the United States during election time about the upcoming elections. But the feeling here is one of optimism that ultimately uh, both Finland and Sweden will be will be NATO allies. Representative, we know that Secretary of State Antony Blinken and his Chinese counterpart are actually present in Munich for this conference. I would like to ask you about China and the aftermath of that downed spy balloon. Let me quickly play a little bit of sound for you. It's John Kirby and what he said yesterday at the White House briefing. We're going to exploit this material as best we can. We learned our lot already from the balloon by surveilling it while it was flying over the country. We're going to learn even more, we believe, by getting a look at, at the guts inside it and, and see how it worked and what it was capable of. You know, Representative Himes, assuming arguendo, the U.S. military, its intelligence agencies, looks at the guts of what was going on with this Chinese spy balloon, and it confirms the suspicions that it was improperly surveilling our country. Should President Biden be taking a more aggressive approach to our relationship with China at this point? Well, look, we, we, we can't let the balloon episode color uh, the deeper strategic relationship with China. It was a brazen act uh, that the Chinese did in either ordering or allowing, and we're still not entirely clear what exactly happened, that balloon into U.S. airspace. But look, this is, uh, you know, I'm in Germany right now. The Chinese are the number two trader uh, with Germany. They're massively important to the U.S. economy. Um, and so we can't let this balloon episode uh, interfere with our larger strategic strategic objectives, which, of course, is to get the Chinese uh, to be part of our team eventually, meaning observing the rule of law, uh, comporting themselves more according to values uh, with respect to their minorities and, you know, all of that stuff. So, um, and by the way, we also need the Secretary of State to be able to look uh, his Chinese counterpart in the eye and say, it is not in your long-term interest to be part of this losing effort uh, that Putin is running in Ukraine. So, again, we have very, very big fish to fry with the Chinese, and I would suggests that as brazen as the balloon episode was, uh, it can't be allowed to interfere with the deeper strategic interests that we have with the Chinese. 
I know you're very busy, but I quickly want to ask you one question before I have to let you go. This year, a record number of U.S. officials are attending the Munich Security Conference. About a third of the United States Senate is present. How does that square, Representative, with the continued complaints by some Republicans that we need to stop providing aid to Ukraine? Well, um, first of all, I think you made the point there, right? We had the largest delegation ever to the Munich Security Conference. Um, and I would tell you <clears throat> that, yes, there are some people. Uh, the Republicans tend to be a little bit more vocal about it. Uh, there are some Democrats, I think, who are a little skeptical of our effort. But here's the thing. It's a tiny percentage of the overall uh, U.S. Congress. And I, I, I almost want to say that again, a tiny percentage, because it's really important that the Russians understand and that our allies understand that, hey, we're a big, messy democracy. People have different opinions. But look at the biggest delegation ever to the Munich Security Conference saying, regardless of Democratic or Republican registration, that we are behind NATO, we are behind the Ukrainians in making sure that the Ukrainians defeat the Russians. My thanks to you, Congressman Jim Himes, for joining us live from Munich. I appreciate you.